I bought 753 pairs of shoes to sell on Amazon. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do the same thing for yourself. I'm gonna show you how to find shoes to resell, how to make them more profitable, how to prep, label, and ship out your shoes, and yes, exactly how to get ungated in brands like Nike, Adidas, Puma, New Balance. But first, we have to go back. Back to when I first decided to start selling shoes on Amazon. You see, back in 2018, when I first started selling on the platform, I've always heard of people reselling shoes on Amazon. And the big brand always thrown out there was always Nike. And I was like, yes, that's exactly the space that I wanna get into. I know they're profitable, they sell really fast, and it's way cooler than saying that you sell soap or toilet paper or paper towels or something like that. So I dove right in. I started doing a bunch of product research and I actually started finding a bunch of profitable inventory really, really quickly. And at that point, I was just ecstatic. I was like, this is gonna help me quit my job, my business is about to blow up, everything's gonna work out for me. So then I go try to add those products to my inventory and Amazon says, you're gated. And I was just crushed. Because at the time, getting ungated in brands like Nike, Puma, Under Armour, Reebok, it was really, really difficult to do and not everyone knew how to do it. I definitely did it. And that brings us to our first step. In order to resell shoes on Amazon, you will need to get ungated in the majority of the big shoe brands on the platform. Gating and ungating simply means that Amazon puts restrictions on your account that prevents you from selling big brands like Nike, like Adidas, like Puma, until you provide them with the necessary documentation. That is known as being gated. Once you provide Amazon with that necessary documentation and they approve it, now you will be what's known as ungated and you're able to sell all of those brands. Now, before I show you exactly how to do this, I first need to go over a couple of super important details when it comes to ungating on Amazon. That's gonna help a lot of you new sellers that are really struggling, it's gonna help you a lot. Now, more and more new sellers every single day are coming onto the platform and with a fresh account, no experience and zero sales, they try to go get ungated in Nike, Puma, Reebok, Adidas, you name it. And they're having a really, really hard time. They keep getting rejected after rejected, and then they inevitably end up in the ungating death loop, which means that no matter what you do, you get instantly denied by Amazon because you've already applied too many times. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to solve this in this video. You see, the majority of my clients don't really have issues with ungating. They get ungated in all of those big popular brands that we've talked about throughout the video, but that's because we focus on sales first and ungating second. Based off of what I've seen with my account and my clients' accounts as well, this is my theory. When it comes to ungating on Amazon, Amazon holds sales metrics as the biggest factor when they're considering whether to approve you or deny you. This is why you'll see people that have a year long account. They have an account for an entire year, but they've barely done anything with it. They've barely sold anything, if anything at all. Then they go and try to get ungated. And although they've had an account for a year, Amazon continues to reject them. And then you have someone like my client Davis, who's able to get ungated in these big popular brands within his first month of selling on Amazon. But that's because he did 10K in sales in his first three weeks. Weeks. or somebody like my client Patrick, who's also able to get ungated in these big popular brands, but that's because he's on track to hit 50K per month within his first three months of selling on the platform. So even though they don't have a ton of age on their account, Amazon doesn't really care because they're getting sales, they're bringing revenue in, they're proving themselves as a seller, and then they're having an easier and easier time getting ungated. So that means for you watching, if you're having trouble getting ungated, you need to focus on getting your sales increased, which means you need to focus on selling the products that you're already able to sell that require no ungating, or it is a smaller brand that is an easier ungate. And yes, those brands are out there, those products are out there. There's millions of them. You just have to look. All right, now with that out of the way, let me show you exactly how to get ungated on Amazon. So when it comes to brands like Nike or Puma or Under Armour, the best site to use to get ungated is going to be soccer.com. This is what my clients use. We have been using this for a long time. They give you a real legitimate invoice and it has worked better than probably every other site that I can think of uh, when it comes to ungating these popular shoe brands. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna search for Nike. And once you get the results for Nike, you're gonna go and sort from low to high. And we wanna get the ungate on the cheapest possible option. And we're gonna go ahead and click these ones right here, these Nike shin guard stays. And we're gonna click white. And it's only $9. I'm sure you can get it even cheaper if you use some cash back and a couple of sales that they have currently going on. And then we're gonna go over to Amazon. 
All right, and this is the exact same product as the one on soccer.com. All you need to do is you need to make sure that you are gated in Nike for this brand by attempting to list your product on your Seller Central account. Once you confirm that you are gated for this product, then you're gonna buy 10 units at least from soccer.com. You're gonna get the invoice by creating an account on soccer.com. Then once you have that, you will submit it to Amazon. You will wait for them to approve you. And once they approve you, you will be good to go. And this process is exactly the same for Nike, Reebok, Puma, Skechers, Crocs, doesn't matter. It's all the exact same process. So now we fast forward a couple of years and I start to notice that Amazon has gotten way more lenient when it comes to ungating on the platform. So I decide to test my luck again. I apply everything that I just showed you on getting ungated and I get approved right away. So I've successfully gotten my account approved for the major brands, Nike, Puma, Skechers, Reebok, Under Armour, Crocs, all of those brands. But now the real work starts. Now I actually have to go and find this inventory. So I start off by combing through a bunch of site-wide sales, Nike sales, Puma sales, Reebok sales, and I start combing through all of the products manually, one by one, going through the entire site. And I do this for about a week, like very, very diligently dedicating a lot of time. And I start finding a few products, but it's nothing crazy. So I decide to kind of switch my approach and I start going to a bunch of retail stores. I go to Dick's Sporting Goods, I go to the mall, I go to Kohl's, and I also hit up the Nike and Adidas outlet. And I must have scanned every single shoe in the Nike and Adidas outlet, and I barely found anything. So then honestly, after that, I was just really feeling defeated about the whole thing. I mean, I have a lot of experience selling on the platform, and even I was having a difficult time finding profitable inventory to sell. And I started thinking to myself, I'm like, man, I really thought this was going to be a lot easier. I spent all day going in and out of stores, and I barely found anything. Yeah, I'll make a little bit of money, but it's not it's not much. And I thought to myself, there has to be an easier way to do this. Which brings us to step number two when selling shoes on Amazon, which is how to source effectively and efficiently. Now on the drive home after hitting up all those retail stores, I had no music. I was just chilling in my car, driving home and thinking, how is everyone killing it in the shoe space? But I'm having so much trouble and I couldn't get it out of my head. And one thing about me is that if I see somebody else succeeding and doing well, I know that it's possible for me to do it. I just have to find the missing pieces. And then once I put them together, I will make it work. So I take a step back and I really start to reflect and kind of get a bird's eye view of my current approach, what experience I have with wholesale and how to source products there. And some of the strategies that I always implement that yield really good results. And then I just start sourcing and all of a sudden it clicks storefront stocking. Because I was just breaking into this new niche, I had no idea where to look, what shoes to stay away from, which ones were the big opportunities. But because I started focusing on storefront stocking specifically, that became irrelevant. Storefront stocking is where you can benefit from the product research that other sellers have already done by looking into their inventory and then you just reverse engineer trying to find the deals that make those products that they're already selling just as profitable for you and then you source those and send them into Amazon. Let me just show you exactly how to do this. All right, so we're gonna move through the storefront stocking process very quickly. All you need to do is go to amazon.com, type in the search bar, Nike, Puma, New Balance, any shoe brand that you know a lot of arbitrage sellers are selling. And then you can either reverse engineer and try to find this exact product for sale somewhere and then source that product. Or you can just go down to your list of sellers right here. And then you're gonna click on a seller with some decent amount of ratings. Uh, but if they have like way too many ratings, Ratings like somebody like this, chances are they're doing uh, things at such a high volume that you're not going to be able to compete. So let's go to shopper stores. And then what we're going to do from here is you can either go down the list one by one, you can search by brand, you can search by category, but we want to look at brands. So we're going to go over to New Balance, we're going to load more so that we have more to choose from. And then we're going to go ahead and click on this shoe. I've already found this one to make things a little bit faster. And all you're going to do is you're going to click on the Google button right here. And then once it brings us over to Google and we're able to see all of the listings, we're going to be able to see, okay, where can we find this product? Can we find it from Joe's New Balance? Can we find it from the shoe store, Shop WSS? And we're going to be combing through all of these listings to see if we can find it at a profitable rate. So we're going to go ahead and click on TC Running Company. And these shoes are currently on sale for $74.95. If we go back to this listing and we just click on the Amazon button. All right, so if we're getting this product for $74.95 and at the current buy box, which is $122, we are making $20 in profit just a hair under 27% ROI. Now, personally, I would like to see this ROI go a 
little bit higher in the shoe category just to offset some returns that we may get. But if you're just starting out, this is a great product to jump into. You sell five of these, you're making $100 in profit. And then as you get more experience, just make sure that you're increasing the ROI as much as you can. Now, following this plan, I was finding more and more shoes in a fraction of the time, but there was still one big problem that I was running into, which was profitability. Because some of these shoes do weigh more, it was going to affect my shipping cost. I was gonna have to pay more for it. And because of the higher return rate in shoes that I may run into, I needed to turn these decent products into great products. Which brings us to step number three, which is how to make shoes more profitable. Now, there are a lot of different ways to make your shoes more profitable, but in this video, we're gonna be focusing on three main ways that are gonna help you get started off on the right foot, and they're really easy to do. Now, what most people do is that they just go from site-wide sale to site-wide sale, and they start combing through the site-wide sale one product at a time. This isn't bad, but if you don't stack anything on top of that site-wide sale to increase your profitability, you will find some products, but everyone else is finding those same products at the exact same price as you. So if anybody decides to drop the price, your moat protecting your profit will be non-existent. So how do we solve this? The first way is by using cashback sites. Cashback sites like Rakuten, Retail Me Not, Top Cashback. And these cashback sites will always have a percentage offer that you can get back in cashback from your purchases. So let's say Puma has a 50% off sale going on right now, and then Rakuten has 15% off of Puma. So now we're getting 45% off total from our products, but we're not done yet. Now, the second way to increase our profitability is by using coupons. And this is really an underrated way of doing things, but they're really easy to get. You can either just go to Google and type in Puma coupon or some variation of that and see if there's anything that you can find that will actually still work. You can also just email customer support and and then sometimes they'll give you a coupon that you can then use. And then the last way is by having a new account coupon. So you create a new account for Puma, for example, and then Puma, because you've already created a new account, they will send you a 20% off coupon that then you can stack on top of the site white sale and on top of your cash back. So you can see how this will quickly add up to significantly more profit for you if you know what you're doing that will separate you from all of the new sellers that are just starting out. Now, the third way to squeeze out some more profit from your shoe is by using a prep center in a tax-free state. When you order shoes online, depending on where you're shipping that order to, you will get charged sales tax. So if I ship my products out to myself and I live in California, I will get charged 7.25% sales tax on that order. So if I buy a $100 shoe, well now I'm paying $107.25 per shoe. But if instead of shipping it to myself, I ship it off to a prep center in Oregon, New Hampshire, Montana, or Delaware, well then I not only have to not worry about prepping and shipping out these orders to Amazon, but I'm also saving $7.25 Per unit, which will really add up. You stack all three of these things that we talked about together, and you will seriously increase your profitability when selling shoes on Amazon. Now, in the start, I was shipping all of these shoes to myself, and I needed to figure out how to prep and label these shoes before I sent them off in a shipment to Amazon, which brings us to step number four, which is how to prep and label shoes. Now, shoe prep is very, very simple, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it in this video, but it's really nothing to stress about. If you're shipping out shoe boxes that have have a removable lid, all you need to do is put a rubber band around the box. I use these rubber bands right here and they work really, really well. I get them off of Amazon and this prevents the shoe box from opening and then the shoes falling out, possibly getting dirty or damaged during the receiving and checking process when it gets to Amazon. So we definitely want to make sure that the shoes stay inside the box so that we don't get any sort of negative reviews, any complaints about people receiving damaged inventory. Now, there are also some shoe boxes that are already sealed, like some of these Nike boxes right here. These you don't have to do anything for them. Now, if you're ordering slides or Crocs, these are not gonna come in shoe boxes. If you order Crocs, usually they're gonna come just loose. If you order slides, usually they're gonna come into a poly bag. Now, slides and Crocs have to be in a poly bag with a suffocation warning, and you just simply put them in a poly bag, you seal it up, and you put a label on the outside. Which brings us to how do we label these shoes? Now, when it comes to labeling shoes before you send them off to Amazon, you really have two options. You can use a manufacturer barcode, or 
you can have your own SKU label, which you will get once you create your shipping plan within Seller Central. And when it comes to selling shoes, I really recommend that you always use your own SKU label. Now, although using the manufacturer barcode will save you some time if you're having Amazon prep for you because you will just send it off to them, they will label it for you and you have nothing to worry about. And it will also save you some money if you're prepping it yourself. The big problem with using a manufacturer label is that your inventory is going to be commingled with everyone else's inventory. So let's say you send a perfectly good pair of shoes, completely clean, it's in pristine condition, but I send a really dirty shoe. It's actually dirty and damaged and it possibly could be counterfeit. And I send those shoes as well. And they're gonna mix our shoes together in the same sort of area. So when a customer places an order and you get the buy box, well, they might get the shoe that you sent in or they might get my shoe. And if they get my shoe, now you're gonna run into problems because you either maybe get a bad review, you get a customer complaint about damaged or dirty inventory, or they might file a counterfeit claim saying that your shoes aren't authentic, even though you sent in perfectly good inventory. So that's why I always recommend that you just use your own SKU label so that you avoid this headache at all costs. And to label the shoes, it's really, really simple. All you're gonna do is you're gonna get your SKU label from your shipping plan, and you're gonna place it over the manufacturer barcode, and you're done. And like I said, earlier if you're sending in slides or crocs you have to put them in a poly bag and then you will just put a label on the outside of the bag so that they can scan it and to ship out these shoes over to amazon it's just like creating any other shipment now within my first six to eight weeks i managed to order over 753 pairs of shoes to sell on amazon now although this was a major major improvement from the first couple of weeks we were still not out of the woods after selling through the first couple of batches of inventory i started to notice a big problem returns were piling up up. Now, in the beginning, I was primarily sourcing women's shoes, not because I was focusing in that niche, but it was just what I was having more luck with. Some sold great with little to no returns, and some just absolutely killed me on returns. For example, these Tritoni shoes right here, I kid you not, the return rate was over 60%, which is absolutely insane. But not all of those returns are going to come back to me. You see, if Amazon deems them in sellable condition when a customer returns them, then they will just simply put it back into your inventory, and then you will sell it again. So what's the big deal? If we're getting the inventory back and then we're able to sell it again, aren't we still making a profit? Well, not necessarily. You see, when a customer purchases an item on Amazon, you are going to get charged a referral fee and a fulfillment fee. Those are the two main fees. There's a couple of other little ones, but these are the two most significant. Now, when a customer returns an item, you will get reimbursed your referral fee, but you will not get reimbursed your fulfillment fee. On top of that, you will need to pay a returns processing fee, which is going to vary from two to three dollars, depending on the size and weight of the item. And it's only applicable to the shoes and apparel category. So that means at the end of the day, you sold an item, you got it returned, and then you sold it again. By that point, you've been charged a referral fee, two fulfillment fees, a returns processing fee, and a couple of other little fees that we're not going to focus on. But you can see how this can really add up and this can really, really eat into your profits. So you have to do some strategic things to avoid these problems, but you definitely have to pay attention to your return rate because if you don't, you're going to be losing a lot of money and you're not going to know where it's coming from. Now, with that being said, was it worth selling through those first initial 753 pairs of shoes on Amazon. It was absolutely worth it. Just like any other category, shoes and apparel has their advantages and their disadvantages. I saw the mistakes that I was making and I adjusted my approach. I increased the standards that I had for sourcing items. If I noticed a specific shoe was getting a ton of returns, then I just wouldn't restock it past that test order. But if I noticed a product was selling great with little to no returns, I would double down on those ASINs and I would be more willing to go deeper into deeper into inventory for that one SKU. But there's a lot of advantages to selling shoes on Amazon. One of those big advantages is that you're selling products with a higher average selling price, which means that you're not just selling products that sell well, but you're making $1. You're selling products that sell well and sell fast, but you're making 10, 15, 20, $30 in some cases, right? And that can really add up. Another big benefit is that when you find one shoe, if you dig deep enough, usually that one shoe will lead you into a bunch of different variations that are also profitable. So potentially you could find one shoe and then it turns into five different products that are all profitable, all selling well, and all making you a lot of money. Another benefit is competition. The nature of shoes and apparel is that there is a ton of variations. There's a ton of different sizes, there's a ton of different colors, and that naturally scares people away, scares new sellers away because they don't know how to evaluate that data. But if you take the time to learn that data and you get really, really good at product research, you can really, really benefit from selling shoes and apparel on Amazon. 
Now, some people are gonna run into a couple of tank listings, some high return rate ASINs, and they're just gonna give up on this category altogether. And what I have to say to those people is, see you later, less competition for me. Because I don't just sit and focus on the problem. I notice the problem, we make adjustments, and then we continue to grow. And now, after selling thousands and thousands of shoes, on Amazon, it's become one of my favorite categories to focus on. And I'm so glad that I decided to jump into that niche and I wanted to make this video to help you jump into that niche as well and so that you can have all the tools to get the job done if you decide to do that. Now, one thing that I mentioned is that you have to get really, really good at product research, specifically with variations and dealing with different sizes and colors. You have to really understand product research at a high level. Because of that, I've gone ahead and made this video right here where I show you exactly how to do product research on Amazon. It's 45 minutes long. It shows you absolutely everything that you need to know and I want you to watch it next. Also, if you want to jump into my one-on-one -on -one program to get results like my clients that we mentioned earlier and all of my clients doing really, really well, I work with you one-on-one. -on -one. It's true one-on-one -on -one mentorship. If you want to jump in, click that first link in the description and I will see you guys in that next one.